Hey everybody, so I'm back again. Today's topic will cover ashwagandha, also known as Indian ginseng. It is also nicknamed the Prince of Herbs and Strength of Stallion. This adaptogenic herb has been used for over 3,000 years, and that's just what we have record of, which means it's probably much more ancient. It's been traditionally used in Ayurvedic medicine to promote balance and homeostasis within the body and to counteract the negative effects of stress. So most people are probably familiar with this herb or at least have heard something about it. And as you can guess, it's a very popular herb right now as the masses are running in circles, trying to find ways to manage stress in a generation of pure chaos. So let's get into it. So as I said before, ashwagandha is an adaptogen. An adaptogen is usually a plant or an herb that generates the ability to adapt and adjust. So for example, stress is a factor that threatens homeostasis within the body. Homeostasis is considered to be a stable state of equilibrium or balance. When you're under stress, you may have elevated blood pressure, heart rate, and many other issues. So therefore your body is no longer at homeostasis or equilibrium or balance. An adaptogen helps to bring you back into balance or a state of normalcy. So let's talk a little more in detail about stress. Cortisol is one of your main stress hormones that you can kind of think of as being your body's built-in alarm system. So what happens when you're under constant stress and this alarm system just stays on? Well, it begins to disrupt normal systems in the body, such as your hormones, adrenal function, and over time causing a depletion of micronutrients. Increases in cortisol can also affect your blood glucose and insulin levels. So this sets you up for both metabolic syndrome and diabetes. So basically your entire body is out of whack when you're under chronic stress. And ashwagandha can bring you back into balance. The beautiful thing about this herb is that it modulates your hormone levels. So what this means is, if your cortisol levels are high, it will bring your levels down to normal, but it won't bring it too low. Then if your cortisol levels are low for whatever reason, it won't continue to make your levels lower, it modulates, bringing you back in to balance. There have been over 200 studies done on the benefits of ashwagandha. It's been found to improve thyroid function, treat adrenal fatigue, reduce anxiety, depression, and stress, increase stamina and endurance, prevent and treat cancer, reduce brain cell degeneration, stabilize blood sugar, lower cholesterol, and boost immunity. I believe it's so beneficial in treating such a wide array of ailments because of the reduction of stress. People really have no idea how detrimental chronic stress can be and how stress is really the primary factor in a lot of chronic illnesses. So now let's discuss how ashwagandha works. Its pharmacological activity can be attributed to elements such as antioxidants, amino acids, alkaloids, and a slew of other things. But the star quality and main effect of this herb has to do with a phytochemical called withanolide. This is what gives ashwagandha its power. And we'll come back to that in just a second. The most popular form of ashwagandha is the root extract. The reason the roots are highly sought after it's because the highest concentration of withanolides are found in the plant's fruits. Remember, withanolides are what gives ashwagandha its power. So for this reason, we want to look for root extracts and powders when buying supplements, not the leaf extract. The withanolide content of your supplement should range somewhere between one and 10%. If it is not labeled with this information, I personally would suggest purchasing from another vendor, but of course that is up to you. The higher the withanolite content, the stronger the effects of the supplement. 
If your supplement lists the dosage in milligrams, the general recommendation is to start with 300 to 500 milligrams per day. And it's always okay to start lower. You wanna slowly increase your dosage and monitor your body for any changes, whether it be good or bad. So as I stated in my previous video, anytime you have a new fad where money can be made, look out for the scammers. It's their time to shine. So as more people find out about ashwagandha, the demand continues to increase. This creates pressure on vendors to increase production. As vendors struggle to meet the demand specifically for the ashwagandha roots, some have begun to cut corners and sell impure products. Much of the adulteration comes in the form of non-root parts. So what's happening is the stems, leaves, and flowering parts of the plant are being added to the ashwagandha roots and then being marketed to the consumer as being pure root extract when that is not the case. As I stated before, the highest concentration of withanalyze, the power of ashwagandha, are in the roots, not the other parts of the plant. The result is that the consumer sees fewer benefits at the same price, while vendors make more profit at the consumer's expense. But don't fret, don't worry, I'm never going to give you information on an herb and not tell you how to find a high quality product. So once again, look for products that specify root or root extract. If you're going to be buying in powder form to make your own capsules, obviously make sure it's organic. Keep in mind that if you want to use the powder to cook or make smoothies or something, the ashwagandha is considered to be very bitter and called smell of horse. So do with that what you will. Same with the tea. I can't confirm nor deny as I have not tried it personally myself, but it's probably very bitter. You may want to try a tea blend with other herbs or add some honey, vanilla, or something sweet to offset the taste. If you're going to be buying capsules, look for KSM66, which is developed by a company called Ixarel Biomed. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. This ensures that you are indeed receiving root extract and not the leaves or other parts of the plant. KSM 66 contains more than a 5% concentration of withanolide as compared to most other supplements, which typically range between one and 5%. So it's going to be more potent. The only reason I'm mentioning this company is because it meets the standards for producing high quality supplements. If you do not know what I'm talking about in terms of standards of supplements, go back and watch the video I made on trashy, scammy supplements so you do not waste your money. So among many other certifications, KSM 66 is USDA organic, non-GMO, certified gluten-free, NSF and NASC certified. And as always, if you don't want to go on the hunt for the perfect supplement, that's cool. Rest assured, I've already done the research for you. I have a product in my dispensary called Phytozone. It's a combination of multiple different adaptogens, including ashwagandha, as well as other nutrients needed to help your body respond to stress. And the link for that will be in the description box. And to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Shalom. <laughs>